Hello and welcome to the Farmhouse Heaven where we take DIY projects to the next level. My name is Marcos and today we're going to build a shallow media cabinet center for all of your storage needs. Have you ever wanted to add storage to a room that does not have a lot of space in it? If that is the case then we have an answer for you. Stick around and I'll show you how. As usual, every project starts by breaking down your sheet goods. I'm using 3 quarter inch birch for my cabinet sides, bottom and stretchers. 3 quarter inch pine for my door styles and rails and some 2x8s for my countertop. I add pocket holes to my cabinet bottom and stretchers ensuring these will face down and behind the cabinet to hide all pocket holes. When assembling the cabinet I use the cabinet bottom supports as spacers to place the bottom panel. I use some wood glue and drive inch and a quarter pocket screws. I add my top stretchers the same way. For the bottom stretchers, I add some inch and a quarter construction screws from the bottom panel after gluing it in place. I use the same spacers on the opposite side panel, add some wood glue, flip the cabinet over and add some more pocket screws. I also added these corner braces with some wood glue and inch and a quarter brad nails for additional support. I measured the center of my bottom panel and assembled the bottom support using wood glue and pocket screws. Since I already have the cabinet on the workbench, I added shelf pinholes with a jig for adjustable shelving. Just make sure to secure it in place in order to avoid motion while drilling. This can cause your shelves to be out of adjustment later. I also take the time to sand the inside of the cabinet before adding the face frame. I sand the interior with 220 grit. Then I move on to the larger cabinet and repeat the same steps as the small cabinet. The only difference is I'm adding the center divider by using the stretchers as spacers in order to align the panel. I mark a line on the bottom of the cabinet and add wood glue to the center divider. Drive some brad nails to temporarily hold the panel in place, check for square, then I countersink some inch and a quarter construction screws from the bottom of the cabinet. Then I add my bottom stretchers with wood glue, pocket holes, and countersunk construction screws from the bottom of the panel. Lastly, I install the top stretchers using the same method. To assemble the face frame, I simply mark the center line and drive in some pocket screws from the center style into the rail. I attach the outside styles with pocket screws as well. Now I don't glue these in place in case my assistant decides to make a mistake and I need to make adjustments later. The smaller cabinet only has two styles and rails. No middle rail to worry about. Now I add wood glue to the cabinet and attach the face frame using some inch and a quarter bright nails. <laughs> yes, of course, I do utilize a few clamps to hold this in place. With the cabinets constructed, we move to the countertop. I rough cut the 2x8s for better handling. Then I run them in my planer to flatten them as much as possible and avoid excessive sanding later. Don't worry, if you don't have a planer, it's not the end of the world. Just make sure you have plenty of sandpaper and elbow grease. I try to find the straightest edge and run that against my table saw fence. Then I rip them to size and join them later. I know they won't be perfectly book matched, but this will be close enough where I can use some clamping force to join them later.
I also want to add pocket screws from the bottom side of the countertop so I mark where I want them and drill holes for inch and 3 8 material. Then I add tons of wood glue and use my specialty glue spreader to evenly distribute the glue. Now it's all a matter of adding the right amount of clamps and driving 2.5 inch pocket screws from the bottom side. And remember to wipe off as much glue squeeze out as possible so you don't have to sand so much later. Once the glue dries, I run it in my planer once again to clean up any high spots. I make sure to take very, very light passes to avoid hitting those screw heads. Then some light sanding with 220 grit. To build my doors, I install some tongue and groove bits in my router table. I make sure to mark all my pieces on the top side first. Then I run a slot across all my styles and rails. And finally, I use the groove bit to cut tenons on my rails. I make sure to use a scrap piece behind to avoid any tear outs. The door construction is pretty simple from here. I use some panel clamps to square things off, add some wood glue to the joints, attach the door insert and apply clamping force. Just make sure to align these panels as best as possible. I also add some 5 8 brad nails to hold them in place and add some wood putty to cover the holes later. Once the glue dries, I run the top and bottom of the door in my table saw to clean up the edges. Again, I take some very minimal passes to remove as little material as possible. This is an optional step, but I really like the end result. Next, I use my door hinge jig to pre-drill holes for the soft closed door hinges. Make sure you understand the distance you need from the edge to the center of your hinges, as this jig is very adjustable. I finish the doors by adding a little caulking to the seams. I prep the cabinets for paint by adding some painter's tape to the inside edge of the cabinet. I plan to use a 3 8 nap roller to paint the face frame and a spray gun to spray my doors. I just want to see if there's a discernible difference between using either method. I apply a heavy coat of primer, sand with 220 grit, then apply 3 coats of paint and sand in between each coat with 220 grit again. And in case you're not already doing so, make sure you check out our Facebook and Instagram page after watching this video for some pretty cool DIY projects. I'll leave a link in the description below for the build plans to this project where you can purchase and help support this channel. I'll also leave affiliate links to some of the products and tools I use for this project. This is another great way to support this channel as it doesn't cost you any extra to purchase those products. On to wood staining. Since I ran out of gloves, I decided to develop my own protective equipment by using some plastic bags. I apply the stain using a rag in a circular motion and my makeshift glove works flawlessly. Then I used a different rag to wipe off the excess stain and this is where my glove creation went sideways. The rag was sticking to the surface so I put on two sets of these makeshift gloves and after 3 seconds of wiping, the gloves came off. Literally. So wax on, wax off it is. I add pocket holes to the top of the cabinet in order to screw the countertop in during the installation. I add half inch overlay soft closed door hinges. Then I use painter's tape and mark where my door will rest on the cabinet. I use a straight board as a spacer to hold the door while I drive the screws in place. Thank you. 
I repeat the same process for all doors. And finally, installation. I trace my cabinet dimensions on the baseboards to remove them for a flush finish. I use a multi-tool, a small crowbar, and a hammer to accomplish this. I join the cabinets using some clamps, then I place the rear of the cabinet on the floor in order to drive some screws from the bottom, top, and sides. I do this because the cabinet is way too wide to bring into the room in one single piece. I use my stud finder to mark the studs, then I use a small nail and a hammer to verify. Always remember, trust but verify. Then I drive 2.5 inch construction screws into the studs. I move the countertop in place and drive it. Then I use a combination of pocket screws and construction screws to attach the countertop to the cabinet from the underside. I complete the install by adding some caulking around the edges for a complete flush finish. The best part, we added tons of storage in this room to accommodate a media library, kids toys, games, you name it. But we didn't take up too much space inside the room. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Now that's gonna be a wrap for this project. If you enjoy the content, you know you gotta hit that like button. If you feel like you learned something, please share it with others. And if you wanna continue taking your DIY skills to the next level, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can be notified when we have new videos. Till next time.